Hello and uh, very good afternoon uh, to this program. Um, I'm Dr. Bhupati, uh, orthopedic surgeon, uh, and a short and academic fellow from Indian Healthcare. Uh, today, August 12th, is the World Arthritis Day. So, on behalf of Indian Healthcare and the Department of Shoulder, uh, Elbow, and uh, Rest Sports Injury Department, I welcome you to this live program. Uh, World Arthritis Day. To create awareness, and our uh, MGM Healthcare and our department is doing this program to raise awareness about this arthritis. We have now here Dr. Ram Chidambaram, Director for the Department of Shoulder, uh, Elbow, and uh, Sports Injuries, to talk about arthritis, what it is all about, and he is going to walk us through about the symptoms, treatment options, and reason and one system arthritis. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pati. Like even today. Today is the World Arthritis Day. Arthritis means to many of you, take a knee of arthritis. But arthritis does kick the upper limb joints. So we're going to talk about the unique way how to affect the upper limb. That is shoulder, elbow, wrist, discovered video or no joint, thumb based joints, and also the finger. So there are multiple joints. The beauty of upper limb joints is that it's a tool to manage them. The essential instrument is that the upper limb is The function of the elbow and the shoulder is to place the hand in an optimum position in space to reach the both sides, finger, spokes, etc. So that you carry on with your daily activities, sports activity, recreation, arts, photography, without feeling anything. Let us talk about each and every uh, joint, particularly about the anatomy a little bit about, and then we talk about how the arthritis becomes, the symptoms and signs, and what are the different options available. Let us start with the shoulder. Shoulder is not just like a ball and socket joint. Uh, it's actually a combination of five joint complex. As you see here, the ball is five times bigger than the socket. So, what is, uh, what is holding it? It's the labrum all around the socket, and also the uh, muscles, the rotator cuff muscles, which arise from the scapula or shoulder blade to get attached to the ball. So, together they centralize the ball against the socket so that the big muscles like trapezius, lavicular cross, and selective finger, all these muscles move the joint effortlessly. Shoulder is a unique joint in that it is extremely mobile joint. The shoulder is the only joint in the body that rotates from 180 degrees in three directions forward, as well as sideways, as well as internally and externally rotating. All these are possible because of this mechanism. So, it gets arthritis. When we talk about arthritis, there are four to five types of arthritis. The first is the osteoarthritis. That means Wear and tear or degenerating arthritis that hits you when you are old or when you overwork your joint. The second is the inflammatory arthritis because of some sort of autoimmune inflammatory problem. The common is rheumatoid arthritis followed by gout arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, to name a few. The third type, the third type is the post-traumatic arthritis. You have an injury trauma to the joint and the joint gets worn out to get arthritis. And fourth is avascular necrosis. The part of the articular mechanism gets the blood supply disrupted so the bone dies leading to arthritis. That is an avascular necrosis. And special type of arthritis particularly in terms of shoulder is cuff tear arthritis. We talk about all this. So when the cartilage is torn like this this is an early arthritis of the shoulder joint. The patient will have mild symptoms. The symptoms of arthritis are due to pain, stiffness, and difficulty to move the shoulder joint around. You have resting pain, difficult to find, to do even day-to-day -day tasks like combing hair, brushing teeth, wearing your dress, or reaching back. 
or reaching to shelf, all these activities will become difficult, disabling. The patient will find difficult to sleep on the shoulder and will wake up at night because of pain. The uh, stiffness will hamper a lot of day-to-day -day activities, recreation and uh, leisure activities as well. So when the arthritis gets bad, as you see uh, in the scenario where you have burning out of the arterial cottage completely, the patient will have significant symptoms. Okay. If this the situation comes in, then we have to resort to operative measures. In the early phase, we recommend painkiller treatment, physiotherapy measures like uh, heat pot fermentation, ultrasonic massage, etc. We try those. If that is not successful, then we have to resort to intervention. In the early stage, sometimes the patients are helped by uh, arthroscopy or a keyhole surgery to address the uh, problem of wearing, but this is only a time by exercise. When the joint cartilage is completely worn away, the only one effective solution is to have the shoulder replaced. As such, shoulder replacement is the third most commonly replaced joint in the world, next to hip replacement and knee replacement. But when there is very little awareness of this among the public, patients, doctors, also orthopedic surgeons. There are a lot of technical advancements in the last two decades. The shoulder replacement is a very successful operation. So we will let us talk about that. So when the shoulder is operated, traditionally what we do is to the open surgery to replace the socket with this polyethylene uh, liner component on the, on the proximal humor, that is the upper end of the arm bone, with the stem to prosthesis, like in the hip. This is called anatomical shoulder shoulder orthoplasty and the joint moves. But this joint movement is done by the rotator cuff muscle. They should be intact to do this. So we don't need to uh, particularly use the stem prosthesis. So the uh, latest uh, model now we use for the last few years is the stemless replacement where we re resect only the deformed portions of the head of the tumorous and then put this metaphysical cap under the head. So this is called stemless shoulder replacement. This is a minimally invasive procedure and leads to very excellent outcome without having to sacrifice the bone in the upper part. So these things work if you have a good protector cuff, that is the muscles which go all around the shoulder to keep the shoulder joint in place. But when you have an injury to the rotator cuff, that what happens, the ball is not held in the socket, it tends to right up and then cause arthritis. This is called cuff tear arthritis. It is also a possibility that somebody with the wear and tear arthritis to have a very much worn out rotator cuff due to aging. In these circumstances, and also some circumstances following post-traumatic sequelae, as I said, more than half of the shoulder replacement is increasingly done for fracture and fracture sequel. Means if the shoulder bone is broken into a few bits, three to four bits, we tend to treat this with surgery to put the fragments back in place and then make the ball together and roll it up again. But this is not always possible. Sometimes it is shattered beyond reconstruction. In this particular scenario, or you have an injury to shoulder and you develop arthritis, or in a situation where you have a dislocation, you have an operation, uh, things go wrong, or you keep repeatedly dislocating, you can develop arthritis as well. So all this scenario, stability is not there in the shoulder. The ball is not held against the socket. So it is not possible for the joint to move around. In this scenario, what we do is a completely innovative operation in the shoulder. It's called reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Here, what we do, we replace the socket with the ball, metallic ball, and then the ball of the humeral head with a socket that goes into the arm bone. So this is called reverse shoulder. This is a French innovative operation. I have been performing this for the last 15 years with excellent outcome. Here, the, we, do not, we do not need the rotator cuff top muscle to keep the shoulder in place, whereas the deltoid muscle moves it effortlessly, achieving full range movement, near full range movement. Typically, all these uh, shoulder replacement procedures you have to stay in the hospital for about five days to a week. It's done under general anesthesia. The patient can start to move the shoulder the day after operation, achieving typical near full range movement in about a month time. Progressing the muscle strengthening exercise for the next two months. So this is about uh, shoulder arthritis and shoulder replacement. Next, we talk about the elbow joint. 
elbow joint is a special joint. I keep repeatedly telling this for the, all, all the upper limb joints because there are a lot of function, functional development with the upper limb than a compared to a knee joint. The, this is not simple hinge joint. It is a composite joint. That means it is a combination of three joints together. There is a, the lower end of the arm bone articulating with all of the radius. These two bones of the forearm here, there's a two compartment. As well as this radial head rotates around with the articulating with the ulna forming superior radial joint. So the elbow does two movement. The first movement is bending and straightening. There is flexion and expansion of the elbow. The second movement is rotation. This rotation is very important. For certain jobs, this rotation is very important. Otherwise, you'll be handicapped if you can't turn your forearm like this or pronate like this. This is for supination rotation. The range of elbow movement is importantly necessary from 30 to 100 degree for your day to day living. But a full extension is necessary for especially for some jobs as well as if you're a sports person handling overhead racket sports. Full flexion is not always necessary up to 100 degrees. So this is about the elbow joint. This joint is held by uh, ligaments on either side called medial collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament that hold the joint in place and you have muscles all around to control it. So again, the elbow joints can get arthritis, wear and tear, but that is very less common in India. Commonly we see uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis can hit any joints of the upper limb, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand, and particularly affect the elbow uh, in a predominant uh, situation. Third is post-traumatic. Somebody with a racket uh, sports can get uh, loose cartilage pieces and impeachment that cause progress to arthritis of the elbow joint. Uh, same way, uh, somebody is heavy, doing a lot of heavy work and labor, they also get arthritis of the uh, elbow joint. So when you, the elbow gets arthritis, you have problem is stiffness, pain and stiffness, unable to bend, unable to straighten. In the early stages where you could bend and straighten to a functional range, there is nothing to panic, to continue with non-operative physical therapy and painkiller treatment, avoiding strenuous activities that put load on the joint. As far as any upper limb joint is concerned, mobility is the key. If the mobility is, if the movement is less, then you have to go for it. You have to attempt to improve the movement by physical therapy, pain control measures. If that is not successful, then you have to resort to surgical treatment. For most of the elbow arthritis, we always consider keyhole surgery. Keyhole surgery, or called elbow arthroscopy, is uh, we insert like pencil like camera into the joint and also release the tightness of the joint capsule as well as trim the uh, extra bone that is grown in the elbow, uh, clear the joint. It is like servicing the elbow joint. This is called osteocapsular arthroplasty. There is no joint replacement, but we are creating like a new joint. This will help in the majority of patients with the primary osteocapsular. Arthritis, but the effects could be lasting for any time between one to five years. If the symptoms are getting bad, if it is not responding to physical therapy, then we resort to elbow replacement. Again, there is very little awareness about uh, the fact that elbow joint can be successfully replaced. We should not treat elbow joint as hinge joint when we talk about replacement. We have to have very advanced high quality elbow replacement processes to restore your elbow because the elbow takes tremendous torque force when you do everyday activity. It's not bending and straightening. You have you normally carry weight like this sideways. So you're putting load on the elbow. So if you treat like a hinge, your uh, prosthesis might fail. So we use this uh, prosthesis, which is made from uh, Mayo Clinic USA, which has got a long track record of over 35 years with uh, over 90% survival. So what we do here, we insert this uh, humeral component which goes into the arm bone and we have an ulnar component which goes into the ulnar which is a forearm bone and they are linked here with the polyethylene component which is linked. And it, it is called a sloppy hinge because it allows a little bit of laxity at the joint level to accommodate the top stress. So this elbow joint replacement is a very successful operation. The day after the operation, the patient can start moving the elbow, achieving full flexion full extension, that is bending and straightening of the uh, elbow joint. Okay, that's uh, about elbow arthritis and the possible options about elbow replacement. Uh, next we talk about coming down, we have 
this complex area, wrist, thumb, and hand. So wrist joint is made of the lower end of the forearm bones, that is the radius and ulna, articulating, forming a joint with carpal bones. And this area is complex because there are four joints and ten bones. Four joints or areas, ulna, and eight little carpal bones called scaphoid, which is like a bone-shaped bone. Lunate is a lunar or moon-shaped bone. And you have a tricutrum, which is the tri three corners. Pisiform is a small bone in the corners and the frontal aspect. Then you have distal row, that means the second row, forming trapezium, trapezoid, and capitate, which is the largest bone, and hame that articulates with these two fingers, giving you grip and strength in the hand. So we have a wrist joint, that is a radiocarpal joint. Then we have a mid carpal joint, that means the joints between the two rows of the small little bones in the wrist. And then we have a radio ulnar joint. As I said, at the top there is a superior radio ulnar joint, on the bottom there is inferior radio ulnar joint. Together they move this, uh, make you enable this movement, which is very important in day to day life, in your sports, in your art, in your creative activities. Now, let us talk one by one. The wrist arthritis, that is the radio carpal arthritis. Degenerative arthritis is less common, but the most common form we see is the post traumatic arthritis. That means you have an injury, you fall over, you have an injury to the cartilage, or you have an injury to the radius, that is the distal end of the forearm bone, and it can heal with the disturbance of the particular mechanism, you will develop arthritis. That's the most common scenario. Second is the rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis can hit the wrist, cause problems. And thirdly, there is some peculiar conditions in the wrist that can cause wrist arthritis, what we call as a slack wrist and a snack wrist. We'll talk about that. As I said, there are eight little small bones in the wrist, you see, they are all linked by ligaments. So when the link is broken, the ligament tear in the wrist, this will keep that small fragment, small bones could collapse and then they hit against the radial bone. So they develop scaphoid, lunate, and bones to collapse. That is called slack wrist. Second is the snack wrist. What happens? There is a little bone I said, scaphoid, very important bone that articulates with the thumb. It is important for it to act like a platform for the thumb movement. So this bone can get broken. When you have a fall, you might sometimes break the distal radius, there is a wrist bone or a scaphoid. This fracture is not obvious in the first instance. X-ray will not even show it because of the obliquity of the plane of the scaphoid. So in this situation, if we suspect we do a CT scan to check it. If there is a scaphoid fracture, we recommend surgery in most of the cases because there is always the risk of this avascular necrosis. That means the part of the scaphoid will lose its blood supply. The blood supply comes from the distal end from below upwards. So you need to keep these two pieces together, fix it with a special screw. We do this by minimally invasive key bone method that gives near 100% near results. But if this is not done, if the fracture is allowed to fail, to heal, it becomes a problem because one bone becomes like a two bone. They repeatedly move and that let the uh, wrist collapse. So this becomes a snack wrist. Scaphoid, non union, advanced collapse. So you have a snack wrist or a snack wrist. If you break the scaphoid bone or if you tear the ligament, this can lead to this if it is not attended. For example, if you have an injury to the wrist and if you have a continuing pain, your difficulty in doing day-to-day doing -day activities, you might have torn the ligament bridging the bone, so get it attended. If the ligament is torn, you could very well successfully repair this ligament in the first place by using some latest modern technology called internal brace repair. You reconstruct the torn ligament between the two little bones and achieve near full function. If you miss this, it will end up in arthritis. There is also another peculiar condition that is called Kienbox disease. That means the central small little bone called lunate can lose its blood supply without any particular reason. This also can lead to advanced arthritis if left unattended in the early stages. In the early stages, we do a lot of procedures to restore the blood supply, do some biological method to improve the healing of this dead bone. But if you leave it longer, it can lead to aristocritis. Now, having talked about extensively about the possible options of risk arthritis, what are the options available for us? In the early stages, if it is not debilitating, you could try to restore uh, by doing a uh, risk arthroscopic procedure to make the risk go in as far as possible. And second thing, if it is not getting better, we have to think about surgical options. The surgical options include uh, total risk replacement. 
I have done successfully in England, but it is yet to catch up in India. The process is not yet available. Alternatively, what we do is a uh, few procedures. Uh, number one is the proximal row carpectomy. That means we remove one row of bone and make the second row to collapse and then move it. The patient will have pain relief, able to move, but with only a strong wrist. And secondly, you have arthritis. If somebody has got extensive arthritis of the entire joint, we do a wrist arthritis or fusing the wrist in the position so that there will be a movement of the wrist, but you will have good movement of the fingers. This procedure we prefer for somebody young, uh, like manual laborers who do a lot of work, lifting work, heavy work with the hand. The third operation, which is my preference, is to do excision of the proximal row and do an interposition of the plast. That means not leave a gap, but interpose with pyrocarbon. But these uh, components are very expensive. We have to do uh, import this and then do the operation. Uh, but that restores both mobility as well as strength to your wrist. Okay, this is about uh, wrist operations. Come back to the small little bone here. I said the uh, radio or no uh, joint. Uh, that can also uh, get operated. This is often neglected when you have a break in the wrist bone. Uh, if orthopedic surgeons generally treat the wrist fracture, but sometimes with no this D or UJ, that becomes prominent and cause pain uh, when it becomes arthritic in the future or in the time to come. So when it comes, you have a prominence of this bone, the ulnar side, in, in, inside the border of the wrist, and the rotation is difficult, uh, hampering you to turn this like this. So we have a few options, like we can uh, if, uh, do a T-pull operation to trim the, uh, the prominent bone, that's called an orthoscopic wafer procedure, we could perform that. Our second is a direct procedure, which means excising the distal end of the ulnar bone, uh, which is not very popular nowadays. The third operation is a saw capanti procedure, where we fuse the two bones to make a stable platform for the wrist to move about, but then we create a small section of the bone above to get some mobility. This is in between operation to have some mobility and stability. And finally, a DRUJ prosthetic replacement. Again, I have performed in England, but it is yet to catch up in India as this uh, prosthesis is very expensive and has to be registered in India before us to try. So this is about inferior radio or not joint arthritis or DRUJ arthritis. Lastly, we have to talk about the thumb and the fingers. The thumb is unique function. Without thumb, about 60% of your hand function is lost. So if you overwork with the thumb or with aging, the thumb-based joint called corpometrical joint of thumb can get arthritic. So this is very common like, above the age of uh, 70s. So basically the patient will have pain at the base of the thumb joint here and difficulty in gripping any object, in writing, in even carrying a plate or doing cooking. Just universal. A lady is doing knitting, will find it extremely difficult to do that. So perhaps any activities of the hand will be hampered if you have an arthritis of the thumb base. But the thumb has got three functions. Number one is a uh, precision grip, number two is a side to side grip, and three is the power grip. So all these three things are contributed by thumb. When it gets arthritic, that gets hit. So the options here in the early stage. Uh, we try to treat this without operation as much as possible. As per as it is not disabling, we give the patient uh, uh, painkiller tablets, medications, uh, splint, and general exercises. Avoid these triggering activities to make it painless. Occasionally, we do an injection under image control to make sure to have some pain. Here. If this doesn't work, again, we can help a selected patient with uh, key hole surgery to trim the uh, edges of the one of bone. But if it gets operating badly, symptoms very much, then we have to consider surgical option. Here also you should remember the thumb-based arthritis is not exclusive to elderly age group. It can also happen in younger age group following trauma. There is one fracture called Bennett's fracture, described by Dr. Bennett before the days of x-rays, where you have an injury to the thumb, the base of the thumb bone, metacarpal, fractured and dislocated. If this has to be put back in its place and stabilized for the joint to function again properly. If you have uh, neglected this injury or you have an operation that failed, it can lead to arthritis of the thumb based joint. So, this is another group of arthritis in younger age group post traumatic scenario. If in post traumatic young patient scenario, uh, we might do, uh, consider uh, joint fusion, that means 
fuse the joint, take the articular cartilage and then fuse the joint as one, make it a strong thumb but with less mobility. It's good operation for young patient. For older patient, we need mobility. As I said, the thumb is uh, main issue is mobility. So what we do, we, uh, we exercise that trapezium in the one portion. We, it's a tricky operation. We uh, take a tendon called flexor papillarialis. It's one tendon in the wrist. Half of it, we take it, uh, reroute it through the metacognitive two bones to have stability of the thumb axis and interpose the gap with this tendon and stitch it. It's a, called a thumb suspension of the plastic, which is my preference over the years for our Indian population with CMC joint arthritis. And in my hands, it has given consistently excellent results. So this is uh, these uh, thumb operations are usually daycare operation and they can get admitted on the day of operation and can get the on the same day or the next day following. Finally, hand arthritis. So we don't miss even the terminal uh, or the upper limb. We have MCP joint and finger joints. The MCP joint can get arthritic in the common scenario is rheumatoid arthritis. We talk about the inflammatory arthritis. The commonest is rheumatoid arthritis. This will hit most likely the, the common area it hits in the metacarpal joints of hand. So when this gets uh, very much arthritic, the patient will have deformity, swelling and unable to bend the uh, MCP joint. If you can't bend the MCP joint, you cannot grip with this joint. The hand fingers will be useless. So in this condition, in early stage, we can do non-operative measures. But when, uh, when the things, uh, when pain goes worse, or the stiffness is very much disturbing the day to day activities. We recommend surgery. These joints can be successfully replaced by either silastic component or ceramic component to allow movement. Again, these hand MCP joint replacements are not usually done for post traumatic scenario, where we consider different options of resetting the bone or fusing the bone uh, joints together, not going for replacement because these joints are made for pain relief and functional, not for pain relief. Finally, we have PAP joint arthritis. That is, this joint, if you have uh, like a cricket, uh, cricket uh, playing cricket, you have a hip injury or you have a fall, you can damage this joint. So, if this is uh, intraarticular involving the PAP proximal interphalangeal joint, this has to be addressed. And uh, on many occasions, we see this patient coming to us in a delayed presentation. In the acute scenario, we will try to restore, repair this ligament or the piece of bone to get this joint moving. Because if this joint sticks up like this, it becomes a hindrance to your hand function. Now, when they come late, there are a couple of options where we can do. Number one is to do a hemi-hamic arthroplasty. It is arthroplasty, but we are not putting any metal work. We reset the part of the bone and we replace with the cartilage taken from the hamid bone, part of the hamid bone, so-called hemi-hamid, and transfer that to the finger to reconstruct the particular mechanism. This is called hemi arthroplasty. This can help most of the patients. In a worst scenario where the joint is completely gone and unstable, we resort to fusing the joint in this functional position so that you'll be able to grip with heavy grip power, but when you straighten, your finger will be kept in bent uh, position. So that is about PAP joint reconstruction with hemi arthroplasty or fusion. So, in a nutshell, I covered uh, the. Uh, in a nutshell, I covered the entire upper limb joints: shoulder, elbow, wrist, DOJ, thumb base joint, MCP joint, finger joints. All these joints can get arthritic. The common mechanism of wear and tear, post-traumatic, inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid, the western necrosis, or like cuffed or broken. What we can do. If you have a wear and tear due to aging, uh, if you have it uh, checked, if it is not bad, they always start with non operative measures, progressing to keyhole surgery, and resorting to joint neglect only if necessary. The post traumatic arthritis is because you neglect the trauma or mismanage the trauma in the first instance. So, if we have an injury to the bone of any of these joints which is involving the articulation, that needs to be addressed properly reconstructed or fixed and you should be able to move the joint as soon as practical and possible after the operation to get the joint going. Upper limb joints are designed for movement. Movement will not damage your upper limb joint so you have to keep moving. If you stop moving, if you put immobilization, it can be this bad news for the upper limb joints. Uh, if you have a ligament tear, for example, uh, 
at the elbow or the wrist or the hand. The ligament tear can lead to arthritis. If you leave it neglected or not attended. So if you have an injury to the wrist or the hand, you have pain, you do the uh, rest, give a rest, uh, give ice pack, elevation, compression, all this doesn't work for two weeks. If you still have pain, can you check? It might be a ligament tear which could be easily addressed. In the first place, we repair with the key code assisted methods to restore the natural joint as much as possible, preserve the natural joint. So the final thing is about cuff tear of neuropathy in the shoulder. If you have a rotator cuff tear, if you have an injury or a fall, you, you can't lift the arm up, you can lift it with the other hand, but when you leave the hand, it just drops back. That means you might have torn the rotator cuff. So can you check if you can't lift the arm up on your own after two weeks of a physical therapy after an injury, it can be a rotator cuff tear and improved otherwise. So can you check if it's a rotator cuff tear, we can 100% treat that, repair that to get good results with keyhole surgical intervention rather than letting it go at once and develop arthritis. Because a torn cuff is like a clock, it, it never heals on its own. We have to do something to improve the healing uh, that we have to remember. Lastly, avascular necrosis is not, not in our hands, but sometimes the avascular necrosis is common with the uh, use of steroids, so we have to be mindful about that. And finally, inflammatory arthritis in a different variety of condition. Uh, we do not uh, rush in these patients. We give physical therapy as much as possible to uh, get them better. If it is not better, they will be helped by a replacement organs. So, we'll uh, summarize at that point. We'll take any questions. Yes. Very big thanks of for this collaborative talk on this thing, arthritis on this World Arthritis Day. And we have a few questions uh, coming in the live feed, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, one of the people uh, uh, asked that uh, one of our relative has been diagnosed with a periarthritis of the shoulder. Is okay. there something to worry about? Right. I think we think that talk about that. Basically, the periarthritis is a, a name that has been used in the past. When there was no big understanding about the possible affections of the shoulder. The shoulder can get affected by instability, dislocation, rotator cuff tear, calcific tendonitis, or frozen stiff shoulder, or fracture, or primary arthritis, or rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory arthritis. So much conditions are there. If we do in our clinic practice, if we do a proper examination and after history taking, we could pinpoint where the diagnosis is. But in the past 20 years ago, it was grouped as one painful shoulder is called periarthritis shoulder. It is also to remember in your situation, it most likely is referring to a frozen shoulder. The frozen shoulder is a condition in commonly in diabetic where you have painful stage, uh, the lining of the joint get thick, inflamed, and the shoulder is very stiff because it's called periarthritis. Okay. Uh, but sometimes you might miss the other diagnosis. You have to be make sure that you know only this primary frozen shoulder. That means you should not have any problem with the bone or joint. X-ray should be normal. Uh, MRI scan it done normal. That means it is a frozen shoulder. The main key treatment is uh, pain control measures in the first phase, and then progressing to physical therapy, stretching, exercise, and that will take care of over 90% of this primary frozen shoulder if your diagnosis is exactly that. Thank you very much, sir, for this uh, wonderful orientation program on uh, arthritis day. So we have a question, sir. Uh, one of my friend's father have been treated for TB shoulder, now having shoulder stiffness. Uh, can he go for shoulder replacement? Uh, right. Uh, TB shoulder, we do see uh, cases when the patient coming with that presentation of uh, suspected infection in the uh, shoulder. Uh, we have to aggressively treat that. The main key treatment is to do a surgical treatment of the tuberculous shoulder as and when necessary, followed by APT or anti tuberculous therapy treatment for at least a year from the time of uh, the diagnosis. So, once you do that, that, that is always possible. If you address the suspected TB lesion early on, in our experience, if you have done a keyhole surgery or open surgery to deprive all the affected tissue, sometime or most of the time with the TT, the patient can restore full movement. Or a near normal movement. Uh, it, it doesn't need to be always ending in a uh, ankylosis or a stiff shoulder. So if we have a reasonable joint movement, 
you can still live with it. And that is better. If you have a destruction of the joint, if you left the tuberculosis missed diagnosis in the first place, and you have a late surgery or late starting of antitubercular therapy, you might end up having a stiff shoulder with deformation of the joint. In that particular scenario, certainly uh, shoulder replacement is possible, but after making sure that clinically your shoulder joint is quiet, that means there is no reactivation of infection. Second, inflammatory markers like blood test are all normal, and if you have completed one year of ATT, then we could consider uh, shoulder replacement. Thank you. So there's another question. Uh, this patient had a fractured thumb, a brace of thumb for a few years back, and he had a severe pain. Still, even after operating, what do I think we did mention about that briefly. Uh, the thumb based arthritis can happen because of trauma. Uh, this thumb based uh, injury is commonly called Bennett's fracture, or you have an axial injury to the thumb, the thumb joint fracture at the base of the metacarpal and dislocate. So, it's an intra articular injury. Any joint injury which is into the joint needs to put back, the joint has to be recreated stabilized with appropriate implant and then you have to be able to stop the joint moving. When these things do not happen, that means put back the intra-articular joint portion, proper fixation and early mobilization. When these three factors are not kicking in, you will develop arthritis, the thumb-based joint. And these cases usually happen in younger patients. So we do discuss the treatment option. Keyhole surgery doesn't work for these people. We most probably need to do or consider fusion of the joint. This orthodesis or fusion of the joint is a successful operation for particular arthritis of particular joints. For example, this scenario might benefit being young from a fusion of this joint, remove the articular coverage on both sides of the joint, fix it with a special headless tools or a small plate so that we can still start to move early. But what we are doing, we are depending on the neighboring joints to compensate and move more to compensate for this particular joint which has been fused. So that can be one ideal operation for this particular subset of patients. Next question is uh, from uh, Harish Hari. Uh, my friend, 25 years old, suffering from severe rheumatoid arthritis, elbow. So what are the treatment options available? Okay. Um, I think the regarding elbow replacement, we see a lot of a good number of patients coming to us with uh, head fracture or dislocation or open injuries treated with plastic surgical procedures and come with a very painful stiff elbow with a big scar asking, sir, can we replace the elbow joint? Our answer is no, because for a successful elbow joint replacement, number one, you should have a good skin, good soft tissue and good bone. This is important. Second is the age. If the patient is younger, you will try to hold on because as I said, there is tremendous top force in the elbow. So if you put in an elbow replacement for a very young patient that can get loose with time to come, that 5%, 5 to 10 percent can get loose in 5 to 10 years time, so then we have to revise it. So we avoid elbow replacement in younger patients, but the exception is rheumatoid arthritis. Because rheumatoid arthritis is a very disabling condition and the patient has painful elbow. As I said, the top force is much more common in younger age group because they put a lot of demand in the elbow over the years. But the rheumatoid arthritis patient, because of multiple joint affection, they actually do less, less and less. And they're very happy with if they have the movement, they would not put the joint to full uh, loading. Example, any joint replacement in the whole, weight in shoulder, elbow, wrist, thumb, hand, finger, which is done for number one, pain relief. The two functionally so that you will be living a peaceful life, carry on with your daily activities without pain and with good functional restoration. This is not done for you to do heavy work, manual work, lifting heavy weight, or doing any extraordinary activities. You should, you should remember that. So, we have another question from Supriya. She has a rheumatoid arthritis of fingers which are deviated. What are the treatment options available? 
software. It's very nice to see more questions on rheumatoid arthritis. It's very important because there are a lot of surgical options available in rheumatoid hand. Uh, we touched, because it's arthritis, I want to really focus on the arthritic affection of rheumatoid. Rheumatoid arthritis can cause multiple hand problems, including carpal tunnel syndrome, that is compression of the median down here, you have numbness of the fingers, or triggering, that means the, the, the tendon sheet gets tight and you've got a click when you bend and straighten the fingers. Also have this uh, swelling and drifting of the fingers. This happens because the MCP joint or the knuckle joints can get inflamed synovitis. What happens, the tendon, which is the helping to straighten the fingers, the extensor tendons, tend to slip and fall in the gap between the knuckle. So what happens, subsequently the fingers will go like this, it's called ulnar drifting. If this happens and there is not much of a destruction of the joint, we do a realignment procedure. Basically, we restore that uh, extensor tendon, uh, do a soft tissue repair on either side of the finger and bring the tendons back to the knuckle joint top. And then we also help them with the fantastic, lovely outrigger splint available nowadays we can, we can make for the particular, for the customized for the patient to help them moving the fingers without resorting to joint replacement. But when the joints are completely burnt out, we will, we will advise replacement. This is much more important. In a rheumatoid arthritis patient, they have lots of problems. But we do not jump and say, do surgery. Because you will follow it up only if the joint is symptomatic enough, we recommend surgery. So, Otherwise, the key in rheumatoid arthritis is to consult a good rheumatologist and we put on anti-rheumatology uh, medication. Because the rheumatology medication treatment is excellent in its performance nowadays. So we do see uh, less of is extremes of joint abnormalities. So, next question is from Ranganath Rana. Uh, I'm a physical therapist. During my practice, I have encountered a male patient around 35 years with shoulder deformity in shoulder joint due to arthritis and other joints in the upper limb, also getting worse. In earlier stages, the condition they availed was from oil treatment. So, what are the best treatment options to improve the condition? Sorry, he got, he got uh, arthritis of the shoulder joint and, and he got it got worsened in the due course. So he got some native treatment of uh, oil treatment. So what are the treatment options available? I think it looks like you have the arthritis and the deformity. Uh, if, if you mean deformity, that is totally uh, different. You can be referring to deformities as a result of arthritis. Or it could be like you fracture below the joint or above the joint, the bone gets bent and then the mechanics are altered and you develop arthritis of the joint. So this is like a special case scenario. I would recommend the proper uh, uh, history taking from you, and a clinical examination, as well as perform necessary tests like X-ray or CT scan to check how much deformity you have. If it is a joint deformity, like deformed, like mushroom shape, the head of the uh, femoral head, it is not a problem. You could have a successful orthoplasty, uh, and considering all the factors. But if you have a deformity, then we will be correcting the deformity either at the same stage or a two-stage procedure to correct the deformity first before resorting to replacing of your joint. Same way, if you say you have multiple joint affection, if anybody having multiple joint affection, particularly the finger joint affection, or you get up in the morning, you feel the finger stiff, and the stiffness doesn't is lasting for more than one hour duration. If these things happen, or if there is a family history of arthritis affecting the hand of the joint, you might be suffering from inflammatory arthritis. Do a proper checkup of that as well to exclude the possibility of uh, the common, most common is rheumatoid arthritis. Exclude that possibility as well. Yeah. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Gupati uh, and Samir for this question. Thank you, MGM. Have a nice day.